a lot of you ask what tent I use and why I use it. Um, this right here, you'll see it's a Hilleberg uh, Nalo 2GT tent. Before I go any further, I want to just say, I am not the expert on lightweight backpacking, okay? There are guys who are super good at that. So go watch their videos or go out to our Hunt Talk forum. There's some guys out on Hunt Talk who have that dialed in. That's not what this is about. This is about the things I use, and I'm just answering your questions to, to give you reasons or, or give you what we use and why we use it. So the reason I use a two-man tent is if it's raining at night, we've got all this camera gear, we've got all this other stuff. I need a big vestibule to keep stuff dry. A one-man tent, one of those super almost lightweight tarp tents, doesn't have that space where I can keep my boots dry, keep my cameras dry, keep my clothing dry. And a two-man tent is more than enough for one guy plus his gear. A one-man tent without a vestibule, you feel like you're sleeping in your broom closet. Um, yeah, it's some extra weight, but it's what I end up using. Um, the other thing some of you asked is, what do I do for water filtration? It depends on what kind of a hunt I'm on. If I'm going to go do an overnight and it's me and one or two camera guys, I don't want a pump couple of reasons. One, a lot of times we're staying where it's cold in a pump. You really got to get that thing dried out or at night when it freezes, that water in there freezes and cracks. So I use this Katadyne base camp. I mean, it is so light. It rolls down to nothing. This will filter 10 liters so fast. It's crazy. You just go find a, a, a water source with a little bit of depth to it and you hang it in the tree and it's filtering really fast. Um, some people say, well, the places I go, the streams are really small and I can't get a big bag like this to get any depth. I understand that. Whatever you do, don't take a big bag like this and dredge it along the, along the bottom. Um, because if you do, there's gonna be so much gunk in that water, it's gonna plug this filter in a hurry. So what I do, I take my jet boil um, container and I will go to the shallow part or the deepest part of that shallow creek and I'll just scoop it out and dump it in here and keep doing that. People are like, well, then that contaminates your, your jet boil. Yeah, but jet boil, once I boil this, guess what? I don't have to worry about contamination anymore. So I bring these collapsible platypus bags if we're going to be overnight and there's three of us. Uh, you don't want to just go and do your little water thing, have to go do more water, go do more water. You know what, bring, what are these, four liters. Bring one of these four liter bags, fill it, then you're not running and, and going to the filter all the time. I've found that this Katadyn base camp system for the amount of water you can filter in a big hurry is way better than the pump systems. And I have the pump systems, I have the straw systems, I have everything else, but I just, I've come to use that. A lot of you ask me what stove I bring, and a lot of times, when we're out just doing a day hunt, we'll throw this in here. If you bring something like this, you can warm up a meal. I don't like to carry my mountain house in the foil packages. So before I head out the, out of the, uh, the truck, I'll have one of these in a baggie like this, and you can eat it out of this baggie. Um, it's, I don't know, it just, that foil doesn't pack well in your pack. It's, it's a pain. Um, and this is also what I use on the backpack overnight hunts. I use this jet boil, bring one can of gas, and I can run that for a long, long time. But some people ask me what my snacks are. Everyone's got their own snacks, but I came across these about a year ago. It's called the Pro Bar. I don't even know where they're made. Salt Lake City, I think it is, somewhere in Utah. Um, but these are super good. Uh, you don't find them at many of the hunting stores. You mostly find them at the mountaineering stores, but I don't get paid anything for it. It just, someone asked the question of what do I eat for snacks? As far as meals, I usually eat a breakfast before I leave camp. Uh, I bring something to snack on, something with a lot of energy, uh, some protein, something that's gonna stick with you. Uh, and you, you guys, uh, you know, if you've done this, you've got your own preferences, so you don't need me to go into that. A couple guys pointed out a few things. In, in my uh, basic necessity bag there is my compass. Um, somewhere around here, I don't know where I put them. I always carry some extra batteries for my GPS, but don't, don't uh, assume that your GPS is bomb proof. Have a compass, I always do. Have a, a surface map with you. 
but make sure you know how to use a compass. You know, a compass doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to use it, so anyhow. Oh, and someone else asked, Randy, you didn't say anything about mountain money. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I responded to the guy, I said, you know what? I just took it for granted that everyone knows you bring TP with you. I don't even go to the mailbox without TP, so. Um, space blanket, when it's cold, uh, even starting to get, you know, September even. Uh, I always bring a space blanket, doesn't weigh anything, could save your life someday. So now I'm, I'm gonna talk about a few rifle things. Uh, I'm not sure what I said that brought up some of these questions, but this is a lightweight rifle. It, the whole package, scope, rifle, everything. It's a 7mm 08, it's the Howa Alpine Mountain Rifle that we've been working on for a couple of years. But uh, one of you asked me, what do I use for scope covers? Well, you'll see. And if you watch the show, you know what I use. I've tried them all. I've tried every kind of, you know, the pop-up scope covers, the rubber band scope covers. I've tried everything. And over years of trial and error, all kinds of weather conditions, whatever, I've come to find that this neoprene scope cover is the best thing I've found. You can see this one's taken a lot of abuse. It's starting to get a few nicks and tears on it. But... I can get it off there so fast. It's, it's pretty much waterproof. Um, it will keep snow off, it'll keep rain off, it'll keep dirt off, and it just, it'll just it fit just about any scope you want. So that's, that's what I use for a scope cover. Some of you ask me how much ammo do I carry. Uh, I don't know if weight is an issue for some when carrying ammo. I usually carry 10 rounds. Here you'll see I've got seven in my, this sleeve and I usually have three in the rifle, which gets me to a point, and I don't mean to lecture, but I never put a live round in the chamber. For us, we always have the chaos of two or three guys moving and everything else, and there's nothing that I can do, no animal that it would be worth walking around with a live round in the chamber and having a tragedy, so. None of our hunters on the show have a live round in the chamber. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, what if you need a quick snapshot? You know what, the way I hunt, I'm not gonna, gonna just shoot the first thing that jumps up. I'm gonna glass it, I'm gonna inspect it, everything else. Once we get close and we know we're moving in for the stock, yeah, then we put the live round in. If the stock doesn't work out, we take the live round out. A lot of you ask me, do I use a bipod? Uh, you'll see a lot of times I do. And it goes on here. If weight is an issue, this is just some weight I don't need, and here's why. Um, <clears throat> I use these Mystery Ranch packs, and a lot of times when I sit down, if I was sitting, what you would see is these Mystery Ranch packs right here in the load lifters have this little pocket built in there. And if I go like that, and even when I'm sitting down, this is every bit as sturdy as a bipod. So it works out really slick, it's kind of a, what I'll call dual purpose uh, pack. And that's why a lot of times you won't see me with this bipod. But if I'm out in flats and I'm, you know, maybe it's antelope and I'm, I'm not gonna be too worried about weight, you're gonna see me use this. This is one of my Mystery Ranch Metcalfs. And I'm gonna get to a question that a lot of people ask. I don't know how, I probably answer four or five emails a day, or I mean a week on this topic and people see me go quote unquote hands free and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, I gotta step over here and grab my, grab my trekking poles. So uh, I don't like a sling. I hate slings because if you wear a good comfortable backpack, that sling right here is gonna be slipping all the time. Drives me nuts. And if you come out west and you hunt and you don't have either a sling or some way to hold your rifle and you think you're just going to carry it like this all day long in the mountains like maybe you do back home chasing deer, uh, you're going to be miserable. So here's this gun bearer thing that I use and I don't know if you can see how that is uh, right there. The butt of the rifle goes in there. It's got a quick connect strap that hooks to to this Mystery Ranch uh, heavy padded shoulder strap. You feed it in here. 
And trying to do this with big gloves on is always tricky. And it goes like that. And there you are, your hands free. This is tucked right up under your armpit. It's fully adjustable if you have a, a longer rifle, a shorter rifle. And now I'm just trucking along like this. I can now use trekking poles and have my rifle right here. That's what I use uh, on this pack. Um, sometimes I'm doing much bigger loads or maybe we're gonna stay overnight. So Mystery Ranch has this Marshall pack here. It's, it's a little bit bigger pack, but it's got the cool feature that it's got a pocket right here that when I'm, I know that I've got to walk, you know, five, six, seven miles or whatever before I'm gonna to get to my hunting area. That rifle butt goes in there and I've got straps here that will go across the, I, I always put it right here and then this strap I put right there and then the rifle sits just like that as I'm hiking. Works slick as can be. A lot of times when it's raining, uh, you want a pack cover. If you're going through a lot of brush, a pack cover is going to get tore up. But a lot of times it's raining and you're going to want to have something to keep your, your stuff dry that's in your pack. The other thing about Mystery Ranch packs is the versatility. Besides them being super comfortable, one of the things you're going to see is I can have this mead hauler, whatever you want to call it. This bag comes off. And once you replace, replace the bag, then this big meat sling goes in here. It attaches to the frame. Pretty slick to have that, especially after you make your first load and you don't really need a bag or you don't want your bag getting any <laughs> bloodier than it already is. So if you want to watch all of our stuff, go to hunttalk.com. That's our big web forum. There are some really, really good guys out there who know this stuff way better than I do. I would bet if you look at most everything that's in Randy's pack, a huge majority of that I picked up little tips and tap tactics from you, from the guys out on Hunt Talk, either hunting with them, reading their stories, or just the discussions they're having out on the forums. And it's been immensely helpful for me. If you want to follow us, obviously the TV show, Fresh Track with Randy Newber, you can watch on Sportsman's Channel. Or if you want to know everything about us, the podcast, the forum, the TV show, go to randynewberg.com, and that has everything you want. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I, I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. The more subscribers we get, the better it is for us, better it is for our sponsors, and you'll get notified every time we put one of these videos up there. Thanks again. Happy hunting.